Click, got it. Everybody's good. Praise God. Well, we welcome you to Day Spring Commission Bible Study Chicago. Today is what? The 12th of February. Two more days for sweethearts or whatever. <laughs> it's just commercials, commercialism. But at any rate, praise God. We're so glad you joined us, whether here or around the world. We give you praise and thanks, Lord, for all you're doing for us. We bless you and we thank you, Father. As we come together, we look to you, Father. We look to you, Father. We look to you. You are our strength. You are our God. And we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that was made available through us through Jesus Christ's obedience. We thank you, precious Lord, that there's great things that you have in store for all of us. And though we may be going through challenges in some areas, we all know that we have the victory because you've ordained it to be that way. You've made us more than conquerors. You're not making us. You've already made us more than conquerors. And because of that, we're, we're called to just walk in it. We're called to see it, be it, and express it. So we give you praise today as your spirit leads and guides us. We step aside and say, Holy Spirit, have your way with us, in us, and through us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, it's been a quite a time, uh, and uh, let me just press here my recording for, for my purposes. There we go. Video. Praise God. All righty. Praise the Lord. So anyway, we're so glad that everyone's joined us. You know that we had our challenges. We got hit with the uh, head colds, then it uh, turned into uh, a flu. And and uh, But at the end of the day, Jesus is Lord. And thank God. You, you know, I always tell people, thank God, my land, for medical science. Amen. Thank God for doctors. I mean, thank God for doctors. He gave them wisdom. Why? Because he knows not everybody's at the, at the level they should be to be able to walk in the fullness of faith to receive their covenant blessings and promises. So along the way, he gives us doctors, doctors with wisdom. Well, although we have some doctors that are pretty shady, but the bottom of line is, is that at the end of the day, God is the one that gets the glory. Because remember what we learned, and that is, is that medicine cannot heal you. It can only assist your body to heal itself, but medicine cannot heal us at all. So thank God for medications and thank you for all those good things. But at the same time, we're also pressing in to grow in our faith. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, we talked, uh, those of you that joined us uh, during the fellowship there on uh, on Saturdays, uh, we were talking about a time to align with the divine. And uh, we talked a little about that here on 129, which is a long time ago. But let's go reiterate a little bit because, uh, because we need to understand that we're in a process right now. We talked about how that we're going through the year of the door. We said, we said to you that it was last year was a year of the master coming and approaching with his blessings, our judgment. We talked about how that he's going to measure us by the standard of Jesus Christ. And so we're all in the process of going from one level to another level. And so it's no condemnation of where you're at, but you shouldn't stay there. If, if you haven't grown from where you've been last year, shame, shame, shame. But we should be moving forward. Amen. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the, the growth in our lives should be coming through those that we sit under as our pastors, as those that feed us spiritually. But many times, if they're not moving on to another level, then they just continue to bring rehash the same thing, and we don't find ourselves growing to another level so that we can continue to move forward to become Christ-like. And really, that's the objective of God. The objective of the Father is that we become Christ-like. And in order to do that, there has to be changes. There has to be challenges. There have to be testings and trials. Yes? Yes, that's right. I mean, you can't avoid them. I don't care how you try to spin it. Uh, talk about, you know, God wants you blessed all the time. Well, you know what? God wants you blessed all the time. But in order for you to walk in that realm and in that, that dimension, you're going to go through a lot of testings and trials because that's just the way life is. That's why you'll find many times when you read about it from Peter, you'll, you'll find in Peter where he tells you, you know, you're going to have some testings and trials and don't despise them. And don't think there's something wrong with you because you're going through something. But remember this, that when you're going through a test and a, test and a trial, what's happening is and you're being persecuted or, or, or whatever, he says, you know what? The spirit of God is resting upon you. So there's a weight of grace and favor that comes upon us when we're going through challenges in our lives. That's why we don't surrender. 
We don't surrender to the enemy and we don't surrender to what's before us, but rather we surrender to God and we allow ourselves to get wrapped up in what he has promised us, who he is and what he will do for us. Amen. And that's where faith comes in, because remember, faith is seeing the unseen as if it were. And so if we're going to see the end result the way God sees it, then we're going to have to get filled with the image of God concerning that situation. And so we talked about that before from the book of, of Joshua. And there we found out that how that the Lord had said to Joshua when he was facing, when he was facing that city that was impenetrable. Uh, what did he say? Behold, the city is yours. So there's a time where we need to get back to a place of coming into a, 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 a a quiet place, a place of intimacy, a, a place of meditating on the goodness of God and meditating on what his word tells us. Why? Because we need to get things from God's perspective. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that as we go on through the next few sessions, because we're going to be talking about open heavens and other things as well. So let's go on very quickly. Haggai chapter one. Change is not change until there's change. I think we can all agree with that. There's never going to be any change in your life until there's until there's change. And in order to have change, you're going to have to have some action. Amen. You're going to have to make some choices in life. So re change realigns access to not only blessings from heaven, but, you know, one of the most important things that we need right now as we go to Haggai chapter one is we need discernment. Say amen, somebody. Well, you know, in Haggai chapter one, verses 12, I'll, well, actually, uh, I'll, the whole chapter and into the second chapter, and I'm just going to reiterate off the, off, off the cuff here. But, you know, it, as you're looking at that, the Bible tells us that the people, the people had come to a place where they had um, they had really lost their direction and they had they had they had lost their discernment. And, you know, when you when you get a mandate from God, when you get a commission from God, and by the way, every one of you should remember that we all have the same commission. Yes or no? That we are to go into all the world. Now, all the world doesn't mean you have to go to Timbuktu, but it does mean that there's a sphere of influence that you have that you can go ahead and bring Jesus into that sphere of influence. And he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All those that believe shall be and baptized shall be saved. And so we, we know that there's a there's a grand commission, and all of us have a part in, in, in bringing a harvest into the kingdom. All right, enough said about that. So here we go. The, the people have come back out of bondage by the time we get over here to Haggai. And what has happened is they get they come back to Jerusalem. They're supposed to build the, 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 the number one thing. Watch. God releases them from bondage. They come back, and they're no longer slaves. They have favor with the king who gives them all that they need in order to fulfill the mandate of the king, which is build the temple of God. So the people go back and they start, of course, working on the walls because, because uh, during the time of Babylon and so on, they had torn down many of uh, uh, many parts of the wall. And so they needed to repair the walls. And that's what Nehemiah and Ezra is all about. And so we, we come to Haggai here and the people are no longer focused on doing the prime directive, which is build the house of God. They've gone to build their own beautiful homes. They went to the mountains and instead of bringing wood down to go ahead and build God's house, they were building their own homes. And, and the Bible, one, one translation calls it paneled ceilings, uh, talking about they, they, they were building beautiful, ornate homes and, uh, and, and they had forgotten about God's house. And so God sends a prophet to them and he tells them, listen, you need to consider your ways. You need to wake up and discern that something's not right here. And, you know, this is what happens. Uh, and this is what happens when people get distracted. I hope you write that word down because that'll be an emphasis for a lot of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, you get distracted. And once you get distracted and you begin to start focusing on the things that you think should be priority, the next thing you realize is through it all, boom. You start losing focus and the momentum of your original prime directive that God gave you, which is his house first. And so we find that people get born again and, and eventually they come into a place. Maybe they come into a, 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 a fellowship where they emphasize about blessings and, 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 and prosperity or whatever you want to call it. And so they're fo so focused on that that they forget that the pursuit is not focusing on on blessings and getting more from God, but it's it's what? It's building the house of God. 
And so because they don't put the emphasis on developing their, now here's two, two things I'm going to give you now. They don't develop their spirit and they don't develop themselves in the area of their soul, then they get themselves in trouble because their, their, their soul is focused on prosperity, is focused on trying to get stuff. And there's nothing wrong with stuff. There's nothing wrong with having good things. God wants us to have those things. But we must never lose sight of the prime directive. We must never lose sight that God wants you to be built up because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the one that God is saying, I need you to be developed so that you can be at a place where you're productive for me. If you're productive for me, I have no problems giving you what you need and what you desire. Remember, the Bible says in, in Psalm 37 that God gives you the desires of your heart. So he'll give you the desires of your heart. But the bottom line is, first of all, he wants change in your life and in my life. And this is where the struggle comes in, Rose, because we find ourselves that we begin to start being hit from all sides with other things that try to distract us from focusing on the prime directive. Put God first. Now, remember what, what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6. Remember that in Matthew chapter 6, what did he say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Well, the things that he was referring to were the things that he said the heathen are always after. Uh, what are they going to wear? What are they going to eat? Uh, things that have to do with the, with, the, with the temporal, things that have to do with the right now. And there's nothing wrong with looking to the Lord. But how many know that he already said to us, if we pray correctly, we shouldn't have an issue with what we're going to eat. Because in our prayer, it's what? Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. I don't think, I don't see any of you malnourished, even if you're in a still picture. Carmina, <laughs> huh? You know, you don't look malnourished. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying to you, God is faithful to take care of you. If he's mindful about the sparrow, how much more will he take care of you, the Lord said. Uh, above that, when you go before that, the verses talk about mammon. He said you cannot serve God in mammon. So you can only you can only emphasize one God at a time. And you have to choose this day who you're going to serve and pursue. But as for me and my house, we will serve, pursue after the Lord. Why? Because we know that when we put God first, all these things shall be added unto you. Well, that was the problem there in the book of Haggai. The people had focused on theirs, on me, myself, and I, and had forgotten God's house. Now, because of that, things are going south. Things are not going right. And when they're not going right, many times we just blame the devil. Or else we may begin to blame God. Well, God, I go to church. God, I tithe. How come things ain't happening for me? Hello, come on, people do that. I've been around. I've been in now around churches. I've been around enough Christians to know, and I've done it myself. So here we are. Here we are. The people are are, are not discerning, and that's the key word that we're looking at in this teaching. They are not discerning what's going on, and because of that, they don't realize that things are not happening for them because they have lost the divine connection. That, that they have lost the divine connection that gets broken when your focus and your objective gets broken. God's kingdom must come first in our lives. God's house must be built first in our lives. And all these other things are going to are going to happen in our lives. They're going to come into into focus. You know, a lot of times I, I, I've been talking about this. As, actually, I was going to teach a little bit about it, but I, I decided not to talk too much about it. But, you know, a lot of people that have financial issues. If the only reason they have financial issues is because their finance, their giving is, 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 not, is not where it should be. Hello? I'm just saying. What's the motive for giving? Is the motive for giving because you, I'm giving so that I can get? You know, give and it shall be given back to you? Well, that's, that's a scripture and that's true. Press down, shaking together, running over. But have you ever noticed that it also talks about how that you should give to those who can't give back to you? I have a daughter in the Lord. I have a daughter in the Lord uh, the, uh, uh, overseas, and uh, and she she was having some issues. And I said to her, "You know, you want to get on, you want to get the financial ball rolling." Oh yes, yes. I said, "You know what you need to do? You need to go and buy buy four or five sacks of rice, divide it into five kilo bags or whatever, and you need to go out into 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 the into the poorest parts of of, of the city and start giving them out. If not, send your send your helpers, send your drivers." To go get and find the poor, poor people and just give them. And don't, you don't even have to tell them who you are. 
Just go ahead and start going and sowing and giving to those who cannot give back to you. Because if you notice what Jesus said there is when you give back to those that cannot give to you, that you're really opening a door of revenue and blessings because then it comes back to you pressed down, shaken together and running over. And so we go on and we realize that when it comes to, to getting out of financial stress, many times it's going to be because we're not doing it the way God called us to do it. Yes, there's some people that, that miss it because they're not tithing. But the bottom line is I don't tithe because I'm trying to get blessed. I tithe because it's training me to be disciplined, to obey in the little things. And Carmenia, if I obey in the little things, then I'll be trusted with greater riches, Jesus said. So it's not enough that I just come in and I'm just doing it because I'm trying to get open heavens. Open heavens over your life, we're going to learn in a little bit, will come because you have developed a level. Come on, my, my, my friend. You, you, develop, you develop a level of obedience. We're going to go there in a little bit. Let's wrap it up here with these guys. All right, Haggai, we're talking about chapter 1. Verses 12 and 13, he goes on because he's talking to them. The heavens over you are closed. The, the, there's not rain. You're not bringing in a harvest. You put money into your pocket, but it's like putting putting money into a bag with holes in it, and you're losing. You're losing. No matter how what you do, you're losing. You're always coming out a, a, on the short end of the deal. And so he says, consider your ways. And if you go and read that story, you should underline how many times God tells them, consider your ways. You know, you need to stop and look at this thing from his perspective. You need to come back and start reanalyzing what's going on in your life that you're not doing that you should be doing or that you are doing that you need to stop doing. You know, people, are, people, people don't understand the tactics of the devil. You know, you may be giving, you may be faithful, you may be blessed, you may go to church, you may punch your spiritual Sunday card and do all that good stuff. But if you got, if you got an issue with unforgiveness, nothing's going to happen for you. If you got an issue with cheesemess, nothing's going to happen for you. Why? Because you're, you're closing the door of blessing by opening the door of a curse coming in. So we have to understand that the enemy's wiles and tactics are very, very strong are very sneaky and you may think you can get away one end and still think you can get a blessing over here but it doesn't work that way that's why the bible tells consider your ways and so i think that as we're coming we come into this new open door the, the year of the door we have to consider our ways and we need to make adjustments mentally spiritually physically financially materially why because these are these are areas that we want to see improvement we want to see breakthroughs you know the year of the door meaning that the the the, the master's coming and he's approaching the 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 entrance he's approaching the the dwelling place and as he's approaching the dwelling place he's coming in why because he's coming to to release a blessing he's coming to bring promotion and therefore before he shows up we have to examine ourselves we got to make sure things are right so that we don't allow the enemy to steal from us because he's going to come and measure you whether you like it or not and right now that's going on i i've i've i've, I've seen three ministers uh, come on youtube talking about i'm quitting the ministry i'm leaving the ministry I mean, these are guys that were running and doing stuff and doing all these different things. But at the end of the day, you know, the one guy I was I was I was uh, watching, he was talking about how that, you know, he's come to a place where he's realized that he had all his priorities wrong. You know, he's out there. He, I mean, he started great. He was on national TV, and that's what got him going. And the next thing you know, he's so busy taking care of of the responsibilities and the and the. Um, and the and and the doors that were opening and, and invitations that he got so caught up that that Jackie he ended up he ended up uh, 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 making making the ministry his wife and his wife his mistress. Hello. And the children and the wife are suffering all because he has his priorities skewed. And then he's and then you know he's he was talking about how they poured their life into other people's lives and and, and you know even helped them with resources and when they were going to get uh, the rent uh, get kicked down this and help them with different things and at the end of the day the people turned around and, and stab them in the back or or abandon them. You cannot put your trust in in man. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in the arm of flesh, but blessed is the man or the woman who puts their trust in the Lord. Amen. And I'll tell you, Jesus said that. That's why it says Jesus never entrusted himself to any man because he knew what was in them. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I said he knew what was in them. 
And I tell you what, you need to discern uh, the vile from the precious. You got to know who's who in the zoo. And that's why we need to develop discernment in this season that we are in. It's more important than anything else because it's not a question of a door opening for you to go minister. It's a question of whether it's your time to go and minister. It's your time. If it's your time to go and minister, you will have the anointing upon to be able to carry out the mission that God has called you to. But if you go out there without having the anointing upon and having the green light to go, then you're going to end up going out there and under your strength, you're going to try to produce something that is going to fall, that is going to fail because God's not in it like he should be. Hello? You know, we want to chase after prophets to tell us what, what, what God's saying, what God, but listen to me. We in this new season must develop the ability to hear the voice of God for ourselves. And that's why it's important to build the temple, build the house. And so the Lord said, look, you're missing it. And the reason you're missing it is because you haven't built the house. Now, Jackie, look at this. These people have strayed so far from the God who delivered them. Anybody been delivered by the Lord? Brought out of darkness to the light? Yes. They, they were delivered from bondage. They were set free and, and were sent back. They got a dimension of favor with the king who said, I'm, I'm going to pay for everything. Go and build God's house. Now here these people have come to such a point that, listen to me, they came to a place. They were supposed to do their job. They got distracted. They got, they got into the me, myself, and I, and on next thing you know, hmm, everything's falling apart. Things are not going right. Why? Melan, because the house was not built. Now watch, watch, watch. If you don't work on the house, and if you don't develop building the house like you should, what's going to happen is you're going to come to a place where you no longer are able to have the hearing ear and the seeing eye. These are two important things in 2024 and beyond. You must develop the ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And you must be able to see, not with the physical eye, but you must see with the eyes of the Spirit what is really in front of you. That's why many people get duped by people who come along and call themselves Christians and offer them a nice, a big deal and a quick way to make money. And the next thing you know, they're crying because they got they got shortchanged. And 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 now and now they're, they're, they're pouting and going around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, listen, you didn't discern. But remember, the first level of discernment in every believer's life, Carmenia, is this the peace of God. And let the peace of God rule and reign in your heart. That's what the Bible says. So the peace of God is supposed to be the umpire. The word rule there is we get the word umpire. He calls the shots. If you don't have a peace about it, I mean, it may look good. It may sound good. It may smell good. But And they may have a sweet smile and address to the, to the nines. But if, it, but if something inside of you is going, eh, eh. Something you better go with what's coming, what's going on inside, because the Holy Ghost is trying to warn you at that level. That's the lowest form of guidance. The highest form of guidance is called a trance. It's called a high, a high vision. But the lowest form is going to be the Holy Ghost. The second level is the word of God. That's why the Bible tells us that we are to renew our mind so that we can discern between the vile and the precious. This is what Hebrews chapter Chapter 5 is all about, where in chapter 5 of the book of Hebrews, he talks to us about how that by now you ought to be teachers, but you need that someone teach you again the first principles of the word of God. And you have need of milk instead of meat. For strong meat belongs to those who have developed their ability to discern. Come on now, there it is. Who are able to discern between the vile and the precious. They're able to discern. And so, therefore, the word of God is imperative in your life. You've got to develop the spirit of God, the presence of God, the word of God. Oh, I'd write that one down. I said the spirit of God, the presence of God, and the word of God. And you'll never develop this, the presence of God if you don't emphasize the spirit of God. And you can't have this, this, the presence of God maintained in your life if the word of God is not having the preeminence in your life. Because God only hangs around with truth. I said God only hangs around with truth. 
What is truth? Thy word is truth. What is truth? Walk in the light as he is in the light. And you will have fellowship, communion with one another. There is a level of communion. Come on, communication. There is a level of communion where he'll talk back to you instead of you always doing the talking. But there's that place of intimacy. And so as you get into the place of developing your spirit, coming into that place of humility, which is the key to coming into God's presence. To come into God's presence, the first thing you need to acknowledge is that you are, all, you are not all that and a bag of chips. You are not all that and God's gift to and whatever. You are nothing. He is everything. You must decrease. He must increase. You must see yourself. Yes, from his perspective, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of the king. But you must remember, he is exalted. He is worthy. He is the one that receives it all. And you are a servant. And a servant must learn to bow. A servant must learn to obey. And a, learn, a servant must learn to be at beck and call. And to hear the voice. Little Samuel, when he was in there, being trained to be a priest in the house of the Lord. What did it say? He was in his, he was in there dozing off to sleep, and he heard a voice say, Samuel. So he went and ran to the prophet, uh, to the high priest, Eli. Did you call me? No, no, no. Please, please, go back to sleep. You're, you're bothering me. He, Samuel, he gets up again. You called me. No, 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 no. A third time, you called me. He said, oh, Oh, Eli, Eli discerned that it was the Lord. He said, the next time you hear that voice say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. And the next thing you know, he practices that and he gets a download. Write it down. He gets a download. And guess what? The Lord tells him everything he's about to do with this priest who has disobeyed him and his sons who have committed sin by raping women at the temple. And, he, and the father didn't do anything about it. And he gets the download. Now, just to show you, Jackie. Just to show you what kind of heart this priest had already developed. Come on now. How many know a priest that speaks for God, the high priest? He should have a pure heart. But you know what? He came. And when he, found, when he knew that God was speaking to the kid... He called Samuel and said, come here. I want you to tell me everything God told you. And don't hold back anything. If you do, whatever, whatever God said will happen, will happen to you too. Wow. What kind of spirit is that? You threatened the little kid, man. Huh? Tell me what God said. And if you keep anything back, may it happen to you too. Woo. See, that's the kind of priest that had already come up out of a guy that had been called from humility, but he got to a place soplado, and the next thing you know, he lost his discernment, and he's no longer hearing from God. Now God is speaking to a little kid. Come on, somebody. So here we find then that in the case of these people, here God told them to build the, build the, te the temple. They didn't build it. And you know what had to happen now? Rose, God had to send an external voice called a prophet. Hello? He had to send a prophet to them because they were so dull of hearing that they couldn't even discern, that they couldn't even discern that the mess that they were going through was because of their own choices. They had lost their purpose and objective. And so God is telling them, straighten up and fly right. Remember that song? The buzzer took a monkey for a ride in the air. Oh, never mind. You can straighten up and fly right. That's right. And so here we go in verse 12 of Haggai chapter 1. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel. We're talking now about the governmental authority. Zerubbabel represents governmental authority. Whether it's in a country, whether it's in a state, whether it's in a city for your mayors and, and elder elder. Uh, Whatever councils, uh, whether it's in a house, the parents, come on. The rubble represents the governmental st status. Uh, then the rubble, the son of Shetel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek. Joshua is the high priest. So now we got God who has spoken to the people 
And in particular, he's dealing with the one who's in charge of the government, which is over the over the people, and the and the religious leader who is the high priest. And it says, and with all the remnant of the people, what did they do? They obeyed the voice of their God. So they realized they were in trouble. Got to do what God is saying. So they decided, all right, we're going to do what God said to do. So they obeyed. Under uh, if, you're, if you're there, you can underline obey. They obeyed the voice of their God. And the words of Haggai the prophet. Now notice, remember now, why does it connect God's voice with the, the words of the prophet? Because the prophet is just a mouthpiece. He's called what we call an oracle. As a matter of fact, did you know that you're also an oracle of God? You're supposed to be speaking God's word to people. Amen? Whether it's a scripture or whether it's a word of knowledge or whether the Lord prompts you to say something to someone that opens the door, you are an oracle of God. And the more you're willing to step out in faith and say what the, you feel the Lord is speaking, wanting you to say, the more he will add to you. You, do you ever notice that the, the gifts of the Spirit is called the word of knowledge, not the sentence of knowledge? It's called the word of knowledge, not the sentence of knowledge. So you get a word. Huh? Like I told you, I went into that, into that burger joint and I looked at these two women and I got a word. Lesbians. Hello. You'll get a word. I mean, things will pop to you. If you'll move with that, God will give you more to say. Huh? He'll say, he'll say, you see that one there? Tell her that her grandmother's praying for her. Huh? Yeah, her grandmother, her grandmother is, is called Grandma Lulu. Tell her, Grandma Lulu, the Lord said, is praying for you. And the Lord is saying it's time for you to get back to him. Don't you think that's going to rock their world? It's going to rock her world. Why? Because God will continue to give you more in order for you to be able to accomplish what he wants done in a person's life. And you start bringing them stuff that they know you don't know about. It's going to rock their world. And they got to have to make a decision on that. Amen. Well, anyway, they obeyed the voice of the of God and of, the, of Haggai the prophet as the Lord God had sent him. And the people, here's the other key. And the people did fear before the Lord. So now we have number one, God sends you a word. Number two, you choose to side and obey that word. And the motivating factor was the reverence of God, the fear of the Lord. And Proverbs says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you find then the people did fear before the Lord. In other words, they realized they had messed up and they humbled themselves and said, all right, we better do what's right before God. Huh? Verse 13, then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke in the Lord's message and said, Here's what the Lord says now. Watch. I am with you, says the Lord. Hmm. So then we find then that when you realign yourself with what God has been saying to you, then all of a sudden now the grace and favor of God are reactivated into your life again. And the Lord says, I'm with you, says the Lord. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Keep doing what you're doing. And from that point on, they continued to build the house of the Lord. And once, once they finished the house of the Lord in chapter 2, here's what the Lord does. He gives them another word. And he says, you know, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. Huh? What can you give me? You can't give me anything. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And in this house, I will give peace. So there's two things that happen. Once you realign yourself, you're going to find that there's a greater glory that's going to come and rest on you. A greater glory of God's favor. A greater glory of God working on your behalf. And you're no longer going to have to struggle in prayer to try to get it to happen. He says, I'm going to cause this great, great, great glory to rest on you. And I will bring peace like never before. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. I'm going to begin to restore relationships. I'm going to restore, I'm going to restore situations, finances. 
finances, resources, whatever it is. I'm going to put you back on track. I'm going to give you ideas, creative ideas. You know, I was talking to someone the other day and I said to him, you know how God makes you rich? He gives you an idea. How does he do that? He gives it to you when you're in a place of intimacy. He'll drop a thought into you. And that thought is a thought of creativity. And as you meditate on it, then all of a sudden, he, God uses your imagination. Write it down because we're going to talk about the imagination also during this month and, and, and into next month. The imagination. And as you, you begin to focus on it, your imagination begins to unfold that package and you begin to start seeing things of how to make it work so that it produces for you a, a source of income. Remember what I said to you. The person that who created the hula hoop was a person that just... They meditated on that thing, and the next thing you know, they're millionaires. It, there's no problem with God making you a millionaire. What he wants from you is he wants you to come to a place where you are able to come and use the resources he gives you for his glory and for his honor. Amen? Now, I, I'm saying that to you because you need to understand God's in the business of you being blessed, and he wants you to be blessed. But he wants you to understand that as you put his kingdom first, then you will no longer be, be, you will become a breed, part of a breed without greed. Oh, I'd write that one now. You'll become a part of a breed without greed. Come on, a new breed without greed. Why? Because no longer is the focus on what you're going to buy with this and what you're going to do with it. But you're going to say, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? Hello? And he'll tell you, do this, do that, do this. You know, there's some supporters of, of Dayspring that were talking the other day, how that they they have they have put up a fund, they put up some stock, and and and, and all that, all that that comes in through that goes to support the missions and the vision of Dayspring. Hey, hello. Don't you think God's going to bless them in other areas? Sure. Why? Because they've taken their portion and put God first in it. Well, God has no choice but to come back and say, I've got to give you a shovel full. You gave me a teaspoon. i got to give you a shovel full because that's how God works. So coming back, we don't get distracted because if we do, then we're going to get ourselves in trouble. So here he says what? Get back to the Lord. Hear his voice. Do it. Walk in the fear of the Lord so that you don't get sidetracked again. And guess what? God says, I'm with you, says the Lord. So we got to get our what? The lesson is get your, get your divine priorities in order. Amen? All right. We're closing this part out with get your divine priorities in order. And that's why Haggai is there to teach you. If you'll get your divine, your, your divine priorities in order, things will begin to start falling back into place. And always remember this. Anytime you decide that you're going to go ahead and realign yourself, you're going to get pushed back. Haven't you found that, Rose? Haven't you found that since you started, go ahead and getting to a place where you're going to just going to do more for God and, and realign your life and get rid of some things that, and Mike and you're, you're making adjustments. Don't you get, did you get some pushback? Then certain things happen. Devil comes and starts messing around with the knee that should be should be bending to worship the Lord and it gets messed up at a golf course. I'm just saying. And then you, there's sickness that comes in. And then this other thing that comes. And all these different things are just pushed back by the enemy. You can write it down. I believe it's First Chronicles. I may be wrong. Or Second Chronicles 29, 26 through 29. Right in there, you're going to find a story of a king. And the Bible says that this king, I believe it was Asa, but this king decided that he was going to go ahead and, and clean out the temple of God and re reinstate the priesthood and, and clean out the mess and all the garbage that was in there of, of idols. And once he started doing that, he instituted the what? He instituted what? He instituted ooh, a Passover and he provided for everyone the Passover meal. And they had a great time. And the Bible says, and God began to bless them. And they were blessed to the point when he went to the temple. He said, where's all this wealth and all this coming from? And the priest says, since the people turned back to God and started doing what's right in tithes and offerings, there is no lack. And look at all this abundance. We don't have anywhere else to put this stuff. Why? Because you will never lose if you realign yourself and get your priorities in order. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added to, to you and more. But then, 
The next thing you read there is this. And after these things and the establishment thereof, King Shemeshareb shows up. And he seizes Jerusalem. And he's going to tear it down and take it for himself. He even sends letters to the people and tells them, you can't do anything about this. And who is your God that can stop me? Oh, that was his mistake right there. But I want you to notice, Milan, it wasn't until after these things, cleaning out the house, reestablishing the things that have to do with, obe with obedience to God, the Passover and so on. After these things and the establishment, that means it wasn't a one-time deal. It was now something that was part of the lifestyle. Guess what? The enemy came to hit him. But as he stood strong and the prophet Elijah was there to help them, Isaiah was there to help them, guess what? They were able to overcome. And at the end of the day, the women went out of the city as the army was retreating and they were going, na, 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 Read your Bible. That's right. Because that's what, that's the end that God wants to give you with whatever situation you're going through right now. You're going to be able to go, na, 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 my God. That's right. Because our God is greater. Our God is stronger. There's no God like our God. Amen. All right, let's go. Because I want us to go and look now at open heavens. I've got uh, 10 minutes. What? I'm sorry? <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm getting serious here. All righty. I want us to go and look because we're talking, we're talking about this favor of God and all this stuff. What happens when you start walking in obedience? You know what happens? You open the heavens. Say amen, somebody. It's called divine favor. You're going to get divine favor. Open heavens. How does it come? I, I told you. It doesn't come because you tie. It comes, it doesn't come, it comes because of obedience. Now watch. I want you to go to Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. I'm giving to you. I'm right, write them down because you're not going to catch up with me once I start. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. All right? You can watch it on the video later. Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 13. Mark 1, 4 through 13. Then we're going to go to Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Then we're going to go to Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Luke tw 3, 21 and 22. Luke 3, 16 earlier. And we'll close with all that. Are you ready? Let's go for a ride. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Now, when all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. This is Luke 3, 21. And while he was praying, the heavens opened. So we our 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 focus here is on open heaven. Now, when all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized, and while he was praying, the heavens were opened. Matthew three thirteen through seventeen, because each one of these each one of these passages has a different perspective. In Matthew chapter three verse thirteen, when Jesus went from Galilee to to, to the Jordan River. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. So Jesus started out from Galilee, and he ended up at the Jordan River where John was baptizing. Verse 14. But John, underline it, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. But John tried to talk him out of it. If you don't have that in your translation, just write it on your notes. But John tried to talk him out of it. This is a very important key that Sitas and I learned when we were just in, a, in our prayer time before we go to sleep. The Lord spoke to us and he showed us some things. He said, but John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, John said. So why are you coming to me to be baptized? I'm adding extra there. Verse 15. But Jesus responded, it should be done 
for we must carry out all that God requires. The King James, I think, said, suffer it to be so, for we must fulfill all righteousness. So to notice, carrying out what God requires is called an act of righteousness. I'm just saying, this will help you. Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed and baptized him. After his baptism, verse 16, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly beloved Son, this is the New Living Translation, who brings me great joy. And I put in, I put in italics, via obedience. Now let's go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 4 through 13. Are you ready? All right, I hear some pages rustling. Verse 4, John 1, verses 4 through 13. John did baptize in the wilderness, and he preached of repentance for the remission of S-I-N-S. -S. Is that correct, Malen? He preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Look at verse 5. I'd underline remission of sins, or, and, and I'll emphasize why later. And there went out, verse 5, unto John, all the land of Judea, and they that were of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, underline it, confessing their sins. So, Rose, what is God, what, what is John doing? He's, he's, he's baptizing them unto a repentance for the remission of sins. Is that correct? When they come to him, the Bible says, uh, when they come to be baptized, they're confessing their S-I-N-S. -S. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Naz. Uh oh, well, the other one said he came from Galilee, but now we find out he, he came from Nazareth. So Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Now, what was the prerequisite? Jackie, what was the prerequisite for being baptized? You had to confess your sins. Is that correct, Malen? Isn't that what it said? They came confessing their sin. Well, you know as well as I do that Jesus didn't have any sin. Why is it that Jesus did not carry any sin? There was no sin for him to confess because he had, he had no sin. And he had no sin. Do you know why? Because from a young age, he was trained in obedience to the law. He was trained in the ways of the Lord. So at a young age, he had already been trained to develop obedience to God's word and God's commandments. So from God's perspective, there's no sin in his life because he's been walking upright all this time before the Lord. Now, you know what, Malen? I'd ask myself this question. <clears throat> Who baptized John? <laughs> okay. I'm just asking you. You ever think about that? If they had to be baptized for their sins, who baptized John? Didn't he have sin in his own life? Okay, I'm just saying. Listen, think about these things. Why is it that John could come and baptize the people for the remission of sins? But it doesn't never tells us that he got baptized for his mess ups. And that doesn't mean that he didn't have sin because he was he, he was born into into the sin of Adam and Eve. Jesus was not born into the sin of Adam and Eve. Remember, Jesus was born of the seed of God. So there's a difference between them. But remember that when John the Baptist was born, the father took him into the, the wilderness and developed him in the wilderness. And there he was trained by the Holy Spirit 
for all those years. So John had developed a level of obedience and he probably had gone through a place of repentance and gone through a place of, 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 of confessing his sins before the Lord. He's already clean before God as far as God's concerned. So when God sends him to do the work, he qualifies because he already dealt with his sins in the secret place. Say amen, somebody. Now, he comes and baptizes. So Jesus comes along, but Jesus has no sin. Why? Because he had already developed a level of obedience. Now write this down, because what I'm going to give you now is something that we got, and that was this. Jesus had developed such a level of obedience that when it came time now to go to get promoted, because this is what's happening here. This baptism that he's about to go through, that John's going to baptize him in water, is going to promote him now to the next level of ministry in his life. Hmm. What are you talking about, Brother Sal? I'm, I'm telling you, Jesus had developed a level of obedience now. And now he reaches the point where he's about to cross over into a new level of promotion. It's time for him to be promoted to go and start his ministry. Can we all agree? All of you that are static on my... Yes, we all agree. But I want you to notice that just as he's about to go through the process of promotion, Milan, guess what? One more time, the devil tries to trip him up. And guess who he uses, Milan? Rose, Armenia, Jackie. You know who he uses? His cousin. What is it that... His cousin has said, you, you need to baptize me. No, 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 no. No, Jesus. No, no. I'm not even worthy to unloose the latch of your... Yes or no? Ah, uh -uh, no, no. I recognize you're greater than me. No. That was the final test of obedience. Jesus could have said, Kuya, you're right. He could have said, you know, you're older, I'll obey you because, you know, that's what we're taught, obey our our, 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 our kuyas. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, you know what Jesus said? No, no, I know you're right. What you're saying is true, my friend. But we must fulfill all righteousness. I must fulfill all righteousness. I must do what's right before God if I'm going to be promoted to the next level. And that's why the devil is fighting so many in the church right now. Because obedience is the key to promoting you to another level of anointing in your life. So here he goes. The people are confessing their sins. Verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up out of the water... He saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. So we notice something about obedience. Obedience pleases God. Write it down somewhere. If you don't get much by the time I say amen tonight, you, you missed it. Because this is one of the keys. Obedience brings reward. Obedience causes promotion. Obedience releases a new level of anointing on your life. This, thou art my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And now watch, I'm not going to verse 12 yet. I'm, I'm going back up because I want you to see the things that we've taught this before and it's imperative. Number one, once he obeyed, Rose, guess what happened next? As soon as he fulfilled all righteousness, the next thing that happens as he comes out of the water. And, you know, here's the picture that most people have. I had it. Is we think that when John baptized them in water and once he came up out of the water, that's when this this heavens open. Holy Spirit comes down. But that's not the indicator here. The indicator here is as Jesus was walking now out of the water towards shore. I said, as he was walking out of the water towards shore, the heavens opened. So there's three things, write it now, that you can experience 
if you fulfill all righteousness and align your side, your life correctly with, with, with God's with God's purpose and plan for your life. Number one, the heavens are going to open. Heavens open over your life means that you're going to begin to have a divine favor and grace that is made available to you. Secondly, what happened next? The Spirit of God came upon him and rested upon him. It's important that you understand it abode upon him. It didn't just come and go. It was now abiding. Write it down. Habitation. When you develop a level of obedience in your life for promotion, you, the Spirit of God moves into another level of relationship with you. Not only does he come uh, and go, but now he comes and he habitates. That means, that means you're going to carry him wherever you go. And he'll begin to manifest. Come on now. The third thing that happened here was the voice of heaven came. Affirmation. So God affirms that he's pleased with his son. And when these things happen, the Bible says, the father said, I am, I am who you are my son. This day have I begotten you. He says, I am well pleased with you. Why? What was he pleased with? His obedience. He fulfilled his task. And remember, the last test he had was his own cousin. You know, there will be people in your life that will try to step in and say, you know, I don't know. I think you're getting too religious. You, you, you know, I don't think you need to go to the Philippines. You know, I don't think you should be giving so much. You know, I don't think you should be praying as much. Maybe you're getting a little too fanatical here. Come on, somebody. You know, I saw what Carmina wrote the other day uh, in, 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 in writing in the 300 and all that. And I'm looking at um, She's quoting scripture. She's getting down. I'm thinking, mm hmm. Yeah, come on, somebody. So we're coming to a place where we understand that as we begin to start coming into this place of intimacy with God, we develop the ability to open the heavens because we're learning to train our soul to obey. And our soul can, will only obey to the degree that your spirit is strong. And you can only develop your spirit in the secret place and in praying in the Holy Ghost. Remember that Jude tells you that when you pray in, 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 the, in your heavenly language, when you pray in tongues, you keep yourself in the love of God. So now, let's finish up here. He goes on, and the next verse says, verse 12, watch this. And immediately, this is King James now, immediately the Holy Spirit, capital S, Spirit, drove him into the wilderness. Did you... If you have your Bible, I would circle that word, underline that word. It drove him. The word drive means to put a pressure on to get there. You know, it's it, you're thinking about you're thinking about uh, Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned. The Bible says the Lord drove them out of the garden. That means they didn't go voluntarily. That means they they were they were being urged out, pushed out. So the Holy Spirit here is nudging Jesus to now go into the wilderness. Why? Why? Because remember, he has he has already been approved for service. Say amen, somebody. Come on, you got to catch this now, because this is our point for tonight. These are these are major highlights. He's now been approved for service. Say amen. I am well pleased with you. You now qualify for service. But before I put you into the service, I'm going to have to give you one more experience of testing. Why? Because although I've given you the spirit, the, the spirit upon you, you're going to have to have the spirit manifesting through you in power. Write it down. Acts chapter. What is it? Hun? Acts 10, 38. Yeah. How God. An. And I would open my Bible and underline it. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. When you get to Acts 10, 38, right, underline that. It says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost conjunction and power. Well, where did God anoint Jesus with the Holy Ghost? 
when he was baptized and the heavens opened. He, he anointed it with the Holy Ghost. But Jesus did not get the power until he went through the testing of being able to deal with the power. And to deal with the power, you're going to have to go through the test of character. Oh, man, I, I make a T-shirt about. Did you just hear what I said? You're not going to get the power in its fullness in your life and be commissioned to go forth if your character is not developed correctly. Those of you that have, that have experienced different presidents and dictators or whatever you want to call them in your country, you remember that a person that has power but no character is dangerous. Let me say, I said a person that has power and authority but has no character is a dangerous person. You can agree with me or shut me off. I'm telling you the truth. That's why you never give person's uh, authority until you've tested their character. Because how they handle that authority is going to be imperative whether your, your business succeeds, whether your, your ministry succeeds or whatever. It's got to be character. So God anoints him with the Holy Ghost, but the power only comes after he passes the test in the wilderness. That's why the Spirit of God now drives him. Notice that it didn't say, and the Spirit of God sent him into all the world to save the world. No. It drove him into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted, number one, tempted of Satan. Number two, he had to deal with the wild beast. And number three, angels ministered to him. So for 40 days, he's out in the wilderness. So 40 days of his life, he lost having to go through the process of proving his character. But you know what? In Acts chapter 1, it says God made up for the 40 days that Jesus lost in being tempted in the wilderness. And he made it up and gave him 40 extra days with his disciples. And the Bible says, and Jesus spent 40 days with the, uh, with the disciples, training them concerning the, the things of the kingdom. Isn't that awesome? You'll never lose with God. What you think is, is lost time because I'm ready. I'm biting at the bit. I'm ready to go. And the Lord says, no, you need, you need to wait. I'm gonna, you got to go through this process of testing your character. huh? And guess what? He'll make up for that lost time that you think is lost time. But it's really a time of testing your character so that you can be ready to handle the power. Now, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. Come on. Who went about doing good and setting free all those that were oppressed of the devil. That's your job. That's your job, Carmina. That's your job, Jackie, Milan, and whoever else is watching me. That's your job to set people free from the what? Oppression of the devil. The word there means to exercise hard control over somebody else. That's what it means. And you're called to set them free from the control of darkness that's being exercised over them. And you come in and the most powerful thing you have is not the gifts of God, it's the love of God. Because love never fails. It'll open the door. Come on. Come on, Rose. You told me that story about you and May and how you went and you ministered in that place and that and that guy. Come on. We, we got stories. What was it that motivated? Love. What was it that broke through? Love. I'm closing. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Luke 3, 16. John, Jesus, John answered Jesus saying, uh, uh, I'm sorry. John answered saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I comes. Who the latchet, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hello. You ever you ever think about that phrase, baptism of fire? You ever hear that? Huh? Oh, they're going through their baptism of fire. That means they're going through a trial, they're going through a testing. That's what it means. 
when you when the day of your baptism of fire comes is you're going through a trial you're going through a test notice what it says jesus is going to baptize you with the holy ghost but he's also going to bring you through the process of character building he's going to bring you through the fire you're going to get you're going to have to go through the testing now look at what happened luke chapter luke chapter 3 verse 21 and 22 as we close now and we're closing with this verse now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus, Luke 3, 21, that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Now, did you notice something there that we didn't learn from the others? And after, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also being baptized and praying, Oh, wow. So he didn't just go there and say, okay, let's do it. No, he was baptized, and then he went into a time of intimacy. He says, and suddenly the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And the voice came from heaven, which said, thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. <clears throat> Remember, Jesus' last test of obedience before promotion was John the Baptist. You will have someone that will come to you that will try to get you from walking on that next level of obedience. So you've got to discern and you've got to build up that God first, God first, God first. And if you will put God first, You'll never miss God because if you know what to do from what is revealed to you, then it will promote you to a place where he will begin to start sharing with you the secret things. He'll start sharing with you new stuff that nobody else knows. And he'll begin to let you become his friend. I call you friend because I want to share with you the things that I'm doing. I want that for your life. I want it for our lives. We must not get distracted in 2024. We must develop the intimacy because the master is coming to promote us. And we must develop obedience. Nothing else pleases God. And it will bring you to promotion in Jesus' mighty name. Father, tonight we bless you. As we come into next week, we'll look at Hebrews chapter 1, and it's going to teach us some things about how you bless those who develop obedience in their lives. We bless your service tonight. Those that are going through a baptism of fire, as it were, those that are going through challenges, those that feel like things are not working like they should, or that perhaps they're feeling some pushback. I thank you, Lord, that these words that we have shared today somehow will find a place of encouraging them, of helping them, to see that what they need to continue to do is develop their tenacity to walk in obedience before you. And as they begin to wane in their strength, they'll be reminded, get back to the secret place, get back to the place where you find your strength is renewed like the eagle and continue to move forward that you may get promoted in due season. We bless your servants now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.